A common problem I'm hearing is that people are working from home now and still trying to keep in touch with families and their students, but they don't necessarily want to share their personal cell phone number because it's a privacy concern, which is perfectly reasonable. Today, I'm going to talk about how to use Google Voice to communicate with families over the phone, uh, be able to call them, be able to text them, be able to receive voicemails from them, but without having to rely on your personal cell phone. So the first question is, what is Google Voice? It's a service, a free service, that allows you to receive and make phone calls. It allows you to send and, and receive text messages. You can have a voicemail. Uh, you can do it from your computer, mobile phone. A lot of the features you would expect from a nor normal uh, phone system. The trick to using Google Voice is that you cannot use your school email account. So whatever your school domain, your Google account is, um, you can't use that. You have to have a personal account. So you have to have something that says, um, whatever your name is, at gmail.com. So if you don't have a personal account, you're going to have to create one before you can do the rest of this tutorial. Okay, now that you have your personal Gmail account, you're going to have to log into Google using that account. So in the upper right-hand corner, you should see a, your face up at the top for your personal account, not your work account. Once you have that all set up, then you want to search for the area that you're from. So in my case, I'm going to put in my hometown, and I'm going to pick a phone number from the list. After you've picked the number from the list, you have to verify using your existing phone number. So at this point, you're going to enter in your personal cell phone number. Uh, you can enter that here, and they're going to send you a text message that's a six-digit code for you to, to verify. That's, that's their way of making sure you're a real person. A few moments later, you're going to receive a text message with a six-digit code. Enter that code into the screen. That way, Google has now confirmed who you are. Click on Verify. Then it tells you that you have successfully tied this phone number that they've assigned to you to your personal cell phone number. Then go ahead and click Finish to continue. And that's it. Now you have a virtual phone number that is tied to your real phone number. Now you can use that that virtual phone number to conduct your business, contact parents, contact families. This screen is the Google Voice interface on a desktop computer. The first thing I want to show you is this icon in the upper right hand corner for the audio settings. Click on that. It gives you options for your microphone, the ringing sound, and the speaker sound. For this, you want the um, you probably want to have a headset for this, but whichever microphone you're using, you want to see this fluctuating uh, voice icon. That's how you know that it's working and that you're being heard. Then you can have a, a different output device for your ringing and for the speakers if for some reason you want that. Um, you can go ahead and test that as well. And that'll let you know that, that that's uh, set up properly as well. And when you're happy with that, you can just click the icon again to close it. Next, let's have a look at the menu on the left-hand side. At the top, you see the triple bars. If you click on that, that toggles the width of the menu. Uh, so if I click that to open it up, you can see that I have calls to the top. This is your normal call log. It shows you all the calls that are coming in or out. If you click on a call, you can click the phone icon to call them back. You can click on the message if you want to set up a text message. Suppose this is a spam bot or, or a telemarketer you don't want to receive calls from anymore. <coughs> You can hit the triple dot to block a number or mark it as spam or just delete the message if you're done with it. You can also archive it just to not necessarily delete it, but to get it out of your way. Uh, below that, you have messages. Messages are text messages. You can use this feature to send and receive messages um, to your parents. A lot of times we're finding that parents are responding more to text messages than they are to phone calls. Maybe they see the district's phone number on the caller ID and decide not to pick it up, or maybe they're at work when you try to call them, so they respond to text messages on their own time. Some people just prefer to get a text message over a voicemail. So a lot of people are finding that the messages are a lot more convenient way to communicate with parents. Below your messages, you will find your voicemail area. This is where you can find and receive uh, all of your uh, your voicemails that are electronically stored for you. Um, so your voicemails are all queued up here, kind of in the visual format. You click on it. It does use like a transcriber to try and uh, transcribe it for you. Um, you can also just listen to it from here. Welcome to Google Voice. 
that's loud. Uh, you can click here to call them back, send them a text message, uh, or like the other options, you can archive it, mark it as spam, block it, uh, or delete it. Uh, downloading is kind of handy, so you can uh, take this, download it, email it to a coworker, um, say, hey, uh, Mrs. So-and-so called and had a problem. Can you try to try to address it, that kind of a thing. The last two options are archive and spam. Archive is effectively a folder of old messages that you just don't want to see anymore, but you don't necessarily want to delete. And um, it's great if you want to go back and look at something from, from a while back. Spam is, is just what it sounds like, things that was automatically flagged as unnecessary. Um, just like your email, a voicemail message could end up in your spam folder if it's from a phone number you previously marked as spam. Uh, so perhaps you want to go back and look through there and see if there's anything that might have accidentally got put in there. That's it for the left-hand menu, so I'm going to collapse that down to make more space. There are a lot of settings that are part of Google Voice. Uh, if you click on the gear icon at the upper right-hand corner, you get the settings dialog. Uh, there's a lot here to cover, but I'm just going to go over the ones that are most likely um, to be something you care about. Um, under account, it shows your Google Voice number. Um, so in case you forget what that is, you can copy that. You can also change it um, if you find that for some reason you're getting a lot of spam or you change jobs or for whatever reason you say you don't want to use that phone number anymore, you can do that. Uh, you have um, linked numbers. So you could have multiple phone numbers linked to this Google Voice. That's handy if you have different locations that you are. So if you're at home and while you're working at home, you want messages forwarded to your home line, you can do that. Or maybe you have it at your desk uh, phone number or if you have your cell phone number, you can link multiple phone numbers to this and then kind of toggle on or off where messages go. So that's kind of handy. Under messages, you have a couple different options there. Uh, forward, you have to always forward to at least one phone number. So right now I only have one, my cell phone that's uh, attached to this account. Um, so I can't turn that one off, but if I have multiple numbers, I could I could toggle which ones I have forwarded to. I can also toggle if I want this forwarded to my email account, which is kind of handy because if you get a voicemail, you can get it as an email. The next section is under calls. For calls, you have call forwarding. So you can um, toggle on or off if you want something to forward to your cell phone. Uh, you can toggle on or off if you want to get email alerts for uh, for phone calls that come in. You can use the screen call feature to force the caller to record who they are, and you get to hear who they are before you decide to pick them up or not. You always want to know about this do not disturb feature. So if you're receiving um, work calls on this phone number and, it's, uh, and you're done for the day, you probably want to turn this on so that you're no longer receiving forwarded phone calls uh, all night long. The last setting you should know about is the voicemail setting. In here, I recorded this one a little bit earlier. Hey, this is Brian. Leave me a message. And that is my default one that I have. You could also, um, if you click on Manage All Greetings, it shows you some other ones that are in here. They have a um, default one for you. The Google subscriber you have called is not available. So you could use that one as well, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to record another one as a out-of-office sort of greeting. So I click on record a greeting, click on the green microphone icon. This is Bryant. I'm out of the office today. Please leave a message. I'll call you back tomorrow. Or maybe not. You can preview it here by clicking play. This is Bryant. You can redo it if you don't like it. If you're like me, sometimes you record this 10 times and you still don't like it, and you click Save. Out of Office. And then click Save. So presently, Out of Office is my active greeting. I can click on Manage Greetings, and it shows which one's my active one. I can come down here, switch it back to my default when I come back. Close. And that's a way for me to have a library of greetings that I can toggle back and forth. I can also, if I want to, which is a really handy feature, get a voicemail via email. So every time someone leaves me an email, it is um, sent to me uh, as an email message, which I usually check a lot more often than I will check this. And then I can also choose to have my voicemails transcribed. Uh, but those are all the features for voicemail. And those are all of the settings that I think you'll probably need to know about right away. The rest of them are there as well, but these are the ones that are the most useful to you.